Okay, so this is a short video to introduce you to Spider. Spider is the IDE that you're going to use to write your Python code on this course. Um, a few preliminaries. Um, the first thing you need to do is check that you are using the correct version of Spider. Um, what you might find in the computer labs at the university is that both Spider 2 and Spider 3 are installed. You want to be using Spider 3. So the way to check that is to look down at our little IPython console here. So what you can see in mine is I'm using Python 3.7.2. Um, that means I'm using Spider 3, which is the correct version. If for any reason you see Python 2 point something, that means you're using Spider 2. Please could you close Spider 2 and open Spider 3. Right, um, so a couple of things we might want to do when we, when we set up um, Spider. The first thing we want to do is go to Preferences, which is this um, uh, spanner on the toolbar there. If we click on that, it will open up our Preferences window. Um, and one of the things we might want to take a look at is syntax colouring. Um, so what we've got at the moment is this white screen um, and we've got um, black text on that white screen with bits of blue. Um, that isn't very nice on my eye when I'm when I'm uh, coding. So what I normally do is I switch that to spider dark, which gives white text on a on a back black ground with some colouring, which I find a bit more pleasant. Um, the second thing um, I look at is what happens when I run my code. Um, and this is this console option here. What I recommend is that you click on execute in the current console. So what that means is when you run code, it's going to appear, the output of which is going to appear here in your IPython console rather than a, an external system or rather than in, in a dedicated console. So we'll say okay to that. Great, so let's introduce you to the various components of Spider. Um, the first thing to look at is the IPython console down here. Um, so this is somewhere you can type Python code into directly and get an immediate output. So for example, I could just do a simple calculation like that. One plus one, and that gives me an output of two. But you could write more complicated code than that. For example, you could write print hello world. And there's your output. You can also create variables within here as you go along. So for example, I'm going to create a variable called x, and that's going to be the sum of 1 plus 1. I'm going to create a variable, a variable y, which is 2 to the power 2. And I'm going to create um, a variable z, which is the sum of x and y. So what that's done is it's created, so these variables are now available for you to, to play about with. So for example, if we, um, if we type in print z, um, you see the value 6. Actually, within the IPython console, what's quite nice is you don't need to use the print command. You could just write z, and that would give you your out of 6. Um, and we can see what variables we've created by coming up to, to this screen here and clicking on the variable explorer. And we can see what variables we've created, what type they are, um, and, what, and what values they've taken. So we can see, for example, that the, the variable x has the, the value of 2. Um, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just to show you how that changes, I'm going to create a, um, a fourth variable. I'm going to call that a. Uh, and A is going to be the minimum of X and Y. And there you go. So there's the value A, and that's taken uh, the value of 2. And when we update various values, so we could now say X equals 5, um, it, it updates it's up there. So this is quite useful for when you are building up your code um, and debugging your code to make sure um, what you think is happening is actually happening in your code. Um, then the big screen over here, which is labeled temp.py, is your scripting screen. 
Um, so the console was quite nice for typing um, bits of code in to check that was running correctly. Um, but in a Python program, what you're going to build up is a, a script or a module of code that you're going to run. So you'll have a, an entire program contained within your script that you that you will run. So, for example, um, uh, we could we could type the same things in here. Whoops, wrong screen. We could type the same things in here as we did before. And then what we can do is we can click on this uh, run file button here, which is the, the green arrow. And what that does is it runs our, it runs our program um, and it's, it shows you the output there. So we could do something much more complicated than that. We could say, for example, uh, we're going to create a variable x1 and that has the value of 200. And um, we've got a, um, a variable of called y1 um, and that has um, the value of 100. And then we're going to have a, a z1 variable and that's going to be the sum of x1 um, plus y1 and then we print that output and we run our code okay so now it prints two things it prints the hello world um, and the 300 value which is the sum of x1 and y1 so you can see we could have a lot much longer script there that we would run if we wanted to we could also um, use some tools to help us debug this um, so for example <coughs> I can I can just put my cursor um, on line 8 which is the print hello word um, uh, line and, and I can click on this run selection or current line or I could press F9 so if I press that um, you can see down in the IPython console what's happened is it's just run that single line of code so that's quite useful if you just wanted to check a little bit of your code um, I could also select multiple lines so if, uh, if I select lines 10 to 12 and click on that same button or press F9 it will run that chunk um, so what that's done is it's, it's created it's created the X1, Y1 and Z1 variables there for me <clears throat> um, so to save that if we wanted to we could just go file and save as um, and we can select a place on our computer to save that um, and I could just call that for video and what that's done is it's created a, a .py file which is our script file for this particular piece of code now we can also load previously created um, scripting files in so let's have a look here in file explorer um, and what, we need to find a piece of code to look at okay so let's see if I can find some code in my Dropbox so it's just like a normal file explorer. Look, I've got a file called Python. Um, and in Python, oh gosh, I've got I've got lots of code. Um, let's see if we've got one for this course. Intro to Python course, that's probably a good place to look. Let's have a look at labs and week one. And we've got one here called um, string manipulation. So let's double click on that and it loads up our, our file. So this is a particular file for you to have a look at in the lab, which um, demonstrates how you manipulate strings um, within Python. So what we can do here is we can we can run the whole thing, and that gives us a whole load of output, um, which might not be that great when we're learning how to do things. So we've got we've got different ways we might we might look at this file. So what we could do, for example, is we could we could copy paste um, bits of it into the console and press enter um, to get the output. Or we could um, we could select chunks of text we were particularly interested in, um, and and run those on their own. So what you can see is have highlighted lines seven to twelve, um, and that included three print statements and um, a comment which is ignored. So it's run print foo, and you can see foo here. So it's entirely up to you how you how you use that. Uh, and that concludes our introduction to Spider.